Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my League Start Guide for the Spellblade Inquisitor. I've done a lot of testing over the past few days, and I think I've optimized the tree progression to a build I'm very happy with, all the way from 12 to 70. Remember, level 70 is where we're roughly trained to think, hey, let's get into doing some Sanctum. That's why I plan my tree around. That being said, you can turn this build into a mapper. I have overestimated or over, not estimated, over invested into offense here. And if you want to turn this into a mapper, you don't want to do Sanctum per se. You just need to reallocate some of the damage to defense. You just need to go, okay, instead of running haste, let me run a termination. Instead of investing in all these damage nodes, let me go grab spell leech. You know, right now, when I've optimized this character, it's for Sanctum. And I want to make that very clear. So that way, if you're planning to just leak start this and go into maps, you know now you need to rechange a little bit on your tree to do that. That being said, most of the stuff should work really well. You're going to deal way more damage than pretty much every other build at level 70 with this level of gear. It's not going to be close and it should scale well as you get more currency, as you get more gear. The ivory tower in strength stack scaling didn't really get nerfed at all. And it's more powerful than ever thanks to the new Adorn Jewel that was added last league. And it's just going to take you to the moon in terms of a build that if you want to keep investing into it, it's going to keep giving you back more power. Now, Let's get into a bit of the note section here. I have a lot of this note section should be similar to last League Star guide I made. You'll know last league I did a League Star based around doing cast on crit. And it ended up being I like Stormbrand of Indecision so much that I didn't even swap out of it. I was just having so much fun. I played it. Stormbrand of Indecision got a pretty sizable nerf, but that's okay. There's some pretty cool skills that I've been personally testing out that I like as potential options to play on this character. Now, the four combinations I'm gonna showcase here, they each do something a little bit better than the other, and this is all with the idea of doing Sanctum. Now, I did Firestorm plus Transfigure Tornado. This is probably one of the better combinations in terms of Tornado has pretty decent quality life and does damage, and Firestorm of Healthy is probably just one of the highest damage spells in the game. Very, very strong combination there, but it's gonna require you to get some Transfigure Gems. Say you don't have those early league, well, I have a setup here that's designed based on no transfigured gems. You just need a couple of uniques in case things are a little bit expensive. I don't expect they will be, but we have setups that can do Sanctum without it. And that's just Firestorm with Unleash combined with this, a second setup of Armor Brand. Now I'm doing these second setups because I have extra gem space and I just want to make use of it because it works out pretty well. And so that's what this is. Outside of that, there's another combination, which is Ice Nova Frost Bolts. From my testing, this was probably the highest damage of the things I tested was just insane, especially later on. I actually ended up taking fanaticism for my early uh, Uber lab and you leap slam around and then you cast a frostball and you, if you do ice Nova with fanaticism up, it just shreds anything. It was actually kind of crazy how much damage this was dealing for a tree of a level 70 character, but it's also not great quality life because it requires that two button cast frost bolt, then cast on it, cast frost bolt, then cast on it. A little bit awkward, right? Not everyone wants to do that. And then for the highest quality of life and probably the setup I liked the most was doing Tornado plus Void Sphere. Now, I couldn't actually test the regular Tornado in game because right now uh, the new Tornado, the new Transfer Tornado, it's not coming out until next league, right? So I was using this Tornado, which effectively deals about half the damage compared to three Tornadoes on the ground. And it has a bit of bad AI because the way this Tornado works is it has this first duration that it's like trying to be hit so you can charge it up. It's some weird mechanics and uh, it has a little bit of a targeting issue. I think the new tornado won't have that issue because it's just designed as a skill that's supposed to heat seek and target enemies. And based on the preview, the movement speed of the tornado it looked like it was buffed or looked a lot faster than the tornado I have here and what I've been testing out, but I don't really know. Maybe it's just because that initial duration is so slow. And as you can see, it, it does start to move faster. So it's probably just the fact the first 1.5 seconds is just slow. But the point is I tested this and basically the way to get comparable damage was if I had two of the 50% damage boons, that's roughly only 5% more damage or so than I would be dealing with a regular tornado. And it felt pretty decent at that. And I was using it in combination with Void Sphere of Rending, which is also getting roughly a 33% damage buff. So I'd put down a Rending, I'd put down a tornado, I'd assassin's his mark and I'd be waiting around. I wouldn't have much to do. Obviously, when we get to the next league, you can cast an additional two more tornadoes, and that'll give me something to do. But for the most part, I was just putting one down, putting one down, and then just kind of leaping around, and the guards would just die pretty fast. I thought that was pretty high quality life, and that's probably what I'll end up doing in terms of quality of life doing Sanctum. That being said, ultimately, if I, I was pushing damage, Firestorm of Pelting would be the way to go. All this to say is I'm pushing Sanctum as fast as possible. A combo skill is really nice to do if you want to push the damage, but you don't need to. Like, for example, I could just do Unleash Firestorm, have that be my only damage skill, and it would do Sanctum just fine. This is just if you want to add a little bit of extra juice, you can grab a Rune Binder and then putting two armor brands on an enemy. It just gives you some extra passive damage. Not necessary in any way, 
but just something you can do if you want to. And you can mix and match skills based on your own preference. The sky's the limit for what skills you want to use. I even put down here, say for example, you did, you weren't caring about thinking, but you want to do some mapping. Well, there's great skills for that. There's arc, there's ball lightning, there's lightning conduit of the heaven. All these skills would be quite feels good. I think lightning conduit is probably one of the best feeling skills. It has like this huge target AOE. You could target, it just zaps a bunch of enemies. And those things will work great. They're just going to be lower on single target, but they're going to feel good to play. And ultimately, they are still strong in their own right. So don't let what I put here be the thing that contains you. Like a lot of people ask me like, hey, since they nerfed Stormbrand of Indecision is the build that it's not at all. You can use basically any spell. A ton of spells got buffed and they all have their own advantages, their own things that are fun visually and feel free to use what you want because the build scales at all. It's just going to be a matter of Best in slot skill here is going to deal the most damage. Second best in slot skill might be the most fun. This skill over here, I just like, and that's the one I'm going to play. You know, just choose you based on what you want to play. Outside of that, I have recommendations for leveling. I have an updated Twitch VOD based on the one I did of a leveling session a couple days ago. And I am planning to do today a stream where I do actually a walkthrough run in where I'm going to do a leveling run where I try to talk about what I'm doing and then cut it up into a YouTube video. So hopefully people have something that if they wanted to do a practice run or they want something that they can use as more of a guide as they're doing it on League Start, say you can't League Start and watch me when I'm doing it live and ask me any questions, if I, whatever, you know, I'm not going to be able to be as... Um, educational on league star because i'm going to be try harding but maybe i can make a video where i go over hey this is why i do the control f control v when i get to a vendor it's because i'm looking for these movement speed boots i'm looking for these color sockets and this is why i'm using an axe this is why i'm using a sword this is why i'm grabbing these spells here all that sort of stuff i can go over as i do it throughout the leveling thing and i think that would maybe be decent for people that want to follow the leveling setup so i'll work on that today on stream Outside of that, I have some gearing recommendation, which comes with a little import folder. I've slightly updated it, but it's still pretty similar to the one last league we had, which was essentially uh, some target uniques along with a few searches for some generic-ish rares. Or I guess most of this is targeted uniques. I guess there's some generic-ish rares. There's not too many rares you need in this build. Ultimately, there's some... It's pretty much just some SSF gear and then strap on some 1C uniques to get your early game going. Outside of that, obviously investing more into it, getting strength in it on most of your rare pieces, getting higher level items. Like you're not going to be able to get a Astramentus as your first unique item because that's going to be 10, 20C. You don't have the currency yet. Maybe you start out with a blood soaked or a carnage heart and you could play with that. But that is that in terms of like just a little nice little list here. If you want to search early on one of the things you just need to click and it'll do the run the search now. I don't know why the search is lagging, but you'll see this will pull up Astramentus is right here. It's something that's a little bit of a time save, and I included it for those who want it. Outside of that, there's the, you know, the progression guide. And then later on, I talk about a few things that came up from last league that I started to learn is, one, there is a slight bug that sometimes occurs with Eternal Youth when you have Predictive on instead of Lockstep. Um... From what I can tell, essentially, there's something that's like an internet issue. I'm not 100% sure. But sometimes the game thinks you took damage to your life pool when you didn't, and it disables your recharge. It's a bug. I don't know exactly why it happens. It doesn't happen from my experience, but I've had been told by other people it does happen. And generally, I've narrowed this down to be people on predictive is what it happens to the most. Sometimes people still have it happen on lockstep. But for the most part, if you run into this bug... um. For the most part, if you run into this bug, it'll fix if you swap from predictive to lockstep on your internet mode or whatever in the options. Outside of that, uh, a brief little thing on mana, pretty much just grab the life mana cost mastery and then that should mostly solve it. If it doesn't, you can run inspiration supports. Realistically, you shouldn't really need this with the tree I have set up, but you have options then eventually, worst case scenario, use a mana flask. But for the most part, this mana cost mastery, it depends on what skill you're using. Some skills you're going to be spammy, in which case you're going to need to invest more into it, like things like inspiration. And some skills you're not going to be spamming, which this will be enough for. So that just depends on what kind of setup on skills you're playing. So work around that how you will. And then, of course, we have the snack tier list. Not much have changed with this list. I did this morning move eggs from A tier to S tier. Uh, I was eating them and I was just like, these things are fantastic. Realistically, they belong in S tier. So I had to make that adjustment. Uh, this you can use as a guide for recommendations for when you're planning out your league start snackage. Um, I like to include that for people that don't have a proper background in how to snack properly, and hopefully that helps you. Outside of that, as for leveling, 
the early game tree is all about pushing damage with dual wield and then by the time we get to crit or we get to the second ascendancy we grab righteous providence and we're grabbing crit and we swap out of elemental overload and then eventually at level 70 when we're doing we're about to go into sanctum we're swapping to e-blade that's when you drop the dual wield stuff that's when you swap to a shield and your energy blade weapon and you start to crank out some sanctum so that should give you an idea of how we're starting this character i want to give you a bit of a showcase of what this character looks in some early sanctums so to start off with i'm going to show you what it looks like to do tornado and void sphere of rending keep in mind these are the nerfed versions of this skill void sphere of rending for example is going to deal 33 percent more damage because it's going to pulse every 0.3 seconds instead of every 0.4 which is a 33 percent damage buff and then tornado itself this skill you have a maximum of one it has bad ai for 1.5 seconds and on top of that, it doesn't have the aesthetics of becoming a fire tornado when you cast it, which is obviously a clear downgrade in terms of fun. So I'm going to showcase that first, and then we can showcase maybe a firestorm or again brand just to give you some context of a few different skill setups. Ultimately, choose what skill you enjoy and play with it. Don't play something you think is unfun. Like if you don't like firestorm, don't play with firestorm. There are other options. Firestorms is good damage, but it's bad visual clarity and it might not be for you work around your own personal preferences now we have a level 71 sanctum this is three levels higher than you will have on league start so this is going to be a little bit tankier than the monsters really should be for this level of gear because normally you do the quest sanctum first and you level up and you get a little bit stronger but i'm showcasing this now you'll see i have 11 passives that's because i'm level 81 i do have uber lab but i unspect it essentially in my testing i was testing out whether or not i like fanaticism it turns out i do like it with this current setup i have while doing take them but i want to showcase you a tree level of a level 70 character we do have a little bit of extra flat life that we wouldn't have it changes my es number by maybe about 70 or 80 or something i don't know exactly but ultimately it's not a relevant difference in how strong the character is going to be our gear is pretty bad so hopefully this should be giving you an accurate representation of what a early first sanctum looks like minus the fact we're doing a level 71 sanctum which has i don't know 20% more life on guards. I have no idea what the different stat changes are between level 68 and, and 71. No clue. But anyways, let's give you a little showcase of what this looks like. And then I'll do a, a room with Armageddon Brand and Firestorm to compare. Essentially what this will look like is whenever you go to guards, Rending does a little bit more damage per second. So I'll put that down first and I'll put down my Tornado. But when it comes to actually playing this on Sanctum League, I'll be doing... Uh, the Void Sphere into Tornado, 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 and, you know, so on and so forth. And Tornado should do a lot better following on and retargeting enemies. But anyways, let's get into this, showcase what it looks like. Void Sphere of Rending, and then he's already dead. Then he is not dead. He didn't die from the first arm. Maybe we didn't crit a few times or whatever. Void Sphere of Rending. If they move out of Void Sphere of Rending, the one thing about it is it doesn't have a lot of AoE. So sometimes you have to re-target it based on what they are doing. That guy's got a big AoE attack, but for the most part, it's a skill that lasts two seconds, and over those two seconds, it will deal 0.3, or you have to divide um, 1 by 0.3 times 190 times 2, or whatever. That's the amount of damage it'll deal in the course of it being up. It's a decent amount. Casting it once is a way more damage than most other things in the game. And it's a great little secondary skill you can add in. And the same thing with Tornado. It has four seconds of dealing 65% every 0.25 seconds. So over the course of one second, it'll deal 240% or whatever. And it'll deal that over the course of four seconds. So in terms of like skills where you, you spend a little bit of time casting, but the amount of damage you get out over its duration is quite large. Now, let's go ahead and look and say, if we didn't have the early game transfigure gem say they are for a reason they're too expensive i don't think that's gonna be the case i think you're gonna be able to afford whatever you want to play but let's showcase what it looks like if we were playing with just firestorm and with armageddon brand now and on these afflictions this is one of the worst ones the speed one you kind of want to avoid that even if you want the early chaos i would i would hesitate to do this on a leash star because it would make the run a lot harder and then uh reduce movement speed that just feels bad let's just go with the currency here uh no map radius or no uh no mini map or whatever and should be fine now granted this is a harder room because it has the traps but it should still be pretty uh okay this guy retargets a lot so we will uh not retargets but he like teleports um, now you'll notice i'm not even like realistically i could just play this as fire so i don't even need the armageddon brand but the armageddon brand is there if you want to put down some damage and like walk away for example like say say i'm fighting two guards i want to go fight this other guy or target this other guy i can do I'm not playing this very well, but 
Um, I'm trying to describe Armor Gun Rifle. Essentially, you can put it down and then you can retarget some others. It's a very low cast time, so it's easy to put it on an enemy and it'll give you some sustained damage. That's the idea there. You could also be using like a Void Sphere of Rending or maybe you could mix in a Tornado. Play whatever you think starts to feel right to you. The point is we have extra gem sockets and there's additional power you can get out of putting down a skill that can attack an enemy over a duration. And hopefully I'm showcasing that. Anyways, this is the Energy Blade character. There's some basic gear setup. This is what it should look like when you get to your level 68 Sanctum. I recommend leveling to about 70 in the campaign. Do not kill Katava because you want that extra chaos res. That's how we can get away with being low life via arrogance plus tempest shield without clicking petrified blood and it works fine. I did, you know, the reason this character's level to 81 is because I did, I think I did over 10 level 70 sanctums testing out different skill gem setups uh, and we didn't fail once. We didn't die once. It's, it works well to have that chaos res, even though there's a little bit of chaos damage on Lycia and stuff, it should be enough unless you just full on face tank some chaos damage and you forget to hit your life last. That's why these things are here to save you if your chaos da or chaos damage starts to be coming in. Also, I should say one of the first passes you're going to get at level 71 is this master right here, which makes the amount of chaos damage you can tank much higher. Anyways, this is the league start guide for the energy blade inquisitor. It's when I'm playing the league start on the new necropolis league. This is something that is not going to be going full heavy into mapping or anything like the new atlas so it's going to miss out a little bit on that fun but the idea here is we get to scale and ramp our power really fast and then when we go to maps we get to just completely crush them for my personal opinion when you go into maps and you're trying to push up to tier 16 maps it has this really feels bad cycle where you're constantly just barely able to do the content or you're getting hit and you're getting killed and it feels bad but if doing something like this and you ramp your gear early and then you just crush the content i think it's a little bit more satisfying or might feel a little bit might feel a little bit better might be less frustrating in my opinion from doing a lot of league starts i've done a lot of league starts where i just push t60 maps and that first day that first two days always feels a little bit bad in terms of man my character's weak this grr, frustrating whereas this feels a little bit easier and not being as frustrating and ramping that gear fast and just slingshotting into doing harder and harder content now i will say this this pob i have a tree set up here for an adorned rough tree. This is just to give you a generic idea of something that I'd say, hey, this is a decent way to go about having a strength instant stack scale going into ivory tower. That's fantastic if you want to do that. The reason I do this is because my, my league starter is more relatable to this. That being said, I am fully planning to do a respec into a tri-stack hex blast minor inquisitor. And I'll probably make a video on that separate of this. I just want to differentiate the two things because if you like this idea of League Starter with self-casting, choosing whatever spell you want, this is the thing I'd recommend. But if you want to follow me on my attempt to push Valdo maps as fast as possible, I'm going to be doing a tri-stagger, which will look a little bit different than this. I think it's something that will ramp in terms of power faster. It needs less gear. My tri stacker, for example, can get away without course gaining elixir uh, set up. Like I plan to do some hybrid life ES stuff. Uh, it'll be weird. We'll see how it goes. I'm not really too sure. I might even change some things around. I don't 100% know myself. But the point is, this is what I'd recommend if you're just doing a more generic strength in stacker. I'd recommend going for Adorned eventually. This tree has 100% Adorned. Adorned is going to be probably expensive, but ideally you want to go for some cheap fractures, do strength in it, do percent live, do crit multi, stuff like that. Roll alt spam corrupt, alt spam corrupt, and that's what you're going to be doing. It's a little bit tedious, but I think it's better than split personality. And ultimately, as you min max this more, you can start pushing towards less uh, passive investment in terms of your voices. You can push towards a higher level adorned you can push towards having implicits on your jewels the scaling is really limitless i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a generic tree here to give you an idea of what is possible in this frame of mind but i just want to differentiate that i am planning to do something that's going to be a bit different in late game scaling anyways that is my video on the energy blade inquisitor league starter if you have any questions about the build Feel free to stop by my stream. I'll be streaming every day until League Start. And I will be making a leveling video walkthrough guide that you can watch and level with and use as a reference point of how and when you swap different things. And hopefully that helps if you want to League Start this character. I'm really excited for the, the uh, Necropolis League. I want to hit it out of the park. I made a wager against a fellow streamer, Fubgun, that I can make more money than him in seven days. Now, as a dad and somebody who's probably only going to play about eight to ten hours a day, and he's going to be, and Fubgun's going to be playing like 20. I'm at a disadvantage, but I think I can beat him if I can 
play my cards right and get to Valdos before anyone else. We'll see how that works out. Anyways, take care and peace out.